Hi, I'm Jason Collins, and this video is on exponential discounting. Exponential discounting occurs when an agent discounts future costs and benefits at a consistent rate through time. Under exponential discounting, each additional period of delay results in a discount of a future cost or benefit by a factor of delta. The discount factor delta is a number between zero and one. The higher the discount factor, the less the agent discounts future costs and benefits. You'll often see discussion of the discount rate, R. In discrete time, the relationship between delta and R is as follows. Delta equals one on one plus R. A larger discount factor implies less discounting. A larger discount rate implies more discounting. Under the standard model of expo exponential discounting, an agent with a choice between alternative streams of payoffs will seek to maximize the discounted utility of the future path of consumption. This equation is an example of exponential discounting with a stream of costs and benefits x naught through to xt incurred at periods naught through to capital T. U naught is the utility of the stream of payoffs at time t equals naught. Xt is the payoff in period t. So u naught equals utility of x naught plus delta times utility of x1 plus delta squared times utility of x2 plus delta cubed times the utility of x3 through to delta to the power of capital T times the utility of x capital T. And that in turn equals the sum from t equals naught through to t equals capital T of delta to the power of t times utility of xt with delta again lying between zero and one. Each period of delay results in a discount of the future cost or benefit by a factor of delta. One period of delay results in a discount of delta. Two periods of delay results in a discount of delta squared. Three periods of delay results in a discount of delta cubed, and so on. The degree of discounting in this equation evolves each period as one, delta, delta squared, delta cubed, delta four, and so on. This results in a smooth decline in present value of a future payoff over time. This figure illustrates the effect of exponential discounting. The figure plots the size of the discount as a function of t for an exponential discounter with delta equals 0.9 and delta equals 0.75. The standard model of exponential discounting is underpinned by several assumptions. The first is time consistency. Once the agent starts moving along the consumption path, they are time consistent with their initial plan. For example, consider an agent with these two choices. Would you like $100 today or $110 next week? Would you like $100 next week or $110 in two weeks? An exponential discounter will choose $100 in both choices or $110 in both choices. The reason is that after one week, the second choice effectively becomes the same as the first choice. Time consistency implies that, that, will, that they will continue to want to make the same choice regardless of when they are making it. The second assumption is consumption independence. Consumption independence means that utility in period T plus K is independent of consumption in any other period. An outcomes utility is unaffected by outcomes in prior or future periods. Imagine a world where an exponential discounter intends to consume a behavioral economic subject. Suppose that exponential discounter wants to consume lecture one at T plus three and lecture two at T plus four. Under consumption independence, if the agent does not attend lecture one, they still expect to benefit from lecture two at t plus four, consistent with the plan they decided at t. This assumption allows us to write x equals x1 plus x2 plus x3 through to xn. That is, good x can be split, allocated, and moved across periods without changing the value of that god, good, beyond the effect of the discount. A third assumption is stationary preferences. That is, the utility function at time t equals the utility function at time t, t equals k. The utility function is stationary across periods. 
The functional form of UT is the same as the functional form of UT plus K. That means that if someone likes ice cream today, they'll get the same utility from ice cream at a future time of consumption. Any preference for ice cream today versus tomorrow comes from discounting of future consumption, not from changes in taste. Similarly, with stationary preferences, you would not learn to appreciate the taste of wine over time. A fourth assumption is utility independence. Under utility independence, all that matters is maximizing the sum of discounted utilities. Decision makers have no preference for the distribution of utilities. They don't seek to de delay gratification or get unpleasant things out of the way.